Welcome to 20 at Twilight, a weekly video post that provides a 20 minute guided meditation, a way of praying with scripture designed to provide a reflective and restful close to the day, focusing on and resting in the presence of God. I am Tracy Leslie, certified spiritual director, life coach, and senior pastor at Trinity United Methodist Church in downtown Lafayette. This evening, with the light of our candle, I want to share with you a Christmas scripture as we prepare for Christmas Eve in just a couple of days. This is one of the scriptures included in the Christmas Eve service, the prologue to John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. The life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We call upon you, O Lord, come quickly to our aid. Give ear to our voice when we call to you. Let our prayers be counted as incense before you. And the lifting up of our hands is an evening sacrifice. Before I read this evening's scripture, I wanna invite us to take a moment to take three deep breaths, remembering that in Greek, Hebrew, and Arabic, the same word can be translated as either wind or breath or spirit. So as we breathe in, we breathe in the spirit of God who fills us with life. As you continue to breathe, I want to invite you to think of the light of Christ moving through your body from your head to your feet, warming you, a warm light. In particular, concentrate on feeling a warming sensation in your hands. Because when our hands are warm, it increases blood flow and our physical and mental states become more relaxed and at ease. So imagine that the light that is Christ, that light that cannot be overcome by darkness, is warming your hands, flowing with a gentle heat across the palms of your hands. And that gentle power of warmth can help your mind and body to enter a more relaxed and restful, a more trusting space.
as always with these meditations. If at any point you would like to pause for additional time to reflect and to pray, feel welcome to do that. This evening, I want to invite you to enter into the Luke's gospel proclamation of Jesus's birth, to engage your senses, to truly place yourself within the story. First, I'm going to read it in, in its entirety and then pause for a few minutes. And then I'll read through again with just a couple of verses at a time, followed by prompts and moments of silence to guide you and invite you again to enter into the story. So here now, Luke's proclamation of our Savior's birth. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of Bethlehem or the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him, swaddled him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child swaddled in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And the angels had left them and returned to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. So now once again, I will share the story with smaller portions at a time. 
and invite you with some prompts to truly enter the story. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Perhaps you too have had an occasion when you've had to travel under less than ideal circumstances. Perhaps you were sick or exhausted. So take a moment to imagine what it must have been like to be Mary or Joseph as they entered the village of Bethlehem after that journey. What would you see as you entered the village? What are the streets and homes and shops that dot those streets? What do they look like? What are the sounds you hear coming up from those streets, from the villagers of various ages? Perhaps some women gathered around a cooking pot or men working together in a shop or children playing out in the streets. Finally, as your journey is ending, try to imagine how Mary's body must have felt, especially her feet and her back. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and swaddled him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. What do you see as you look around? It's tradition, not Luke, that tells us that Mary gave birth in a stable. Often in this time period, actually, um, people, their animals, uh, would kind of wander in and out of their homes. Houses were very basic, of course. So what do you see?
Breathe deeply also. The evening air, how does it smell? Look, in, look down into the face of this newborn child. Allow your eyes to rest upon that face. Imagine touching baby Jesus, his tiny hands, his soft cheeks. How does his skin feel? do you feel as you drink in this scene, as you absorb the sights and sounds and smells, texture and touch? In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Their eyes closed. Imagine what did these shepherds look like? What might it have looked like to look out over the fields? What do you hear? Are the sheep bleeding or have they Settle down for the night. The air is damp. Perhaps you can smell their wool. Not a very pleasant smell. Perhaps the shepherds have gathered around a small fire and are eating bread and drinking tea. How does it taste? How does the air here smell? How does it feel differently from the air in the village and that stuffy space where Mary gave birth?
even an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child swaddled in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God and the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This angel visitation is described dramatically with words like glory, terror, joy, and peace. Powerful words. Just sit with those words for a moment. Imagine yourself as one of those shepherds. What do you see and hear and feel and sense that is glorious? Do you see and hear and feel and sense that is terrorizing? What do you see and hear and feel and sense that is joyful. And finally, are you able to sense any peace in this angelic visitation? When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds Told them. What might the shepherd's journey down into the village have been like? Do you think that they were talking excitedly? Or do you think that the angels stunned them into silence?
does it feel to travel down into the village with such haste? Are your feet slipping on any rocks? Are you struggling to see the path? Now enter in to the presence of the child. What do you see? Is Jesus sleeping? Are Mary and Joseph leaning over the manger? Perhaps the baby Jesus is crying. What do Mary and Joseph say to you when you share your story of the angelic visitation? What do others say? do they all look like? As you share your story, observe the faces and body language of Mary and Joseph and others. Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. To treasure and to ponder. Those are beautiful words, aren't they? Imagine how you feel when you hold something within your heart, when you treasure it and reflect on it and, and work to process it. If you were Mary, what might be your thoughts and feelings, your questions, your wanderings? Shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. We've reflected and imagined what the shepherds felt and heard and saw. But now take a moment once again to kind of draw it all together like a collage to bring into your own mind, your own senses, all that they might have heard and seen. And to ponder that or process it as they likely did.
now receive this Christmas blessing. Loving God, help us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift. Let blessings be poured out with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to rejoice with hearts that are pure. May Christmas morning find us thankful to be your beloved children. And may Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven for Jesus' sake. Amen. The joy and the peace of the Christ child be yours. Amen.